I sent around the January 10th minutes. Does anyone have any comments on those? Hi, Mark. Good evening. I move we accept the minutes as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor, um, say aye or aye. raise your hand. Okay. Aye. Cassandra, that was you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Great. Amy Biden is, um, has a conflict tonight, so it's the seven of us tonight. And so uh -huh. um, we welcome all the guests as well. <coughs> um, Mark, do you want to bring hey, up? Joe, do I um, update? Do I just X this out? Okay. Mark noticed a mistake. Oh. <laughs> we can hear you, Edwin. <laughs> it's a family show, Edwin. <laughs> yeah, I pressed the wrong button, I think. Well, you're still well, with us. I still see you, so look down at the bottom. It's probably another choice you just have to click on. I X'd it out. No, we see you and we hear you. <laughs> You can turn it off and come back on if you want. There I go. Okay, good. You're back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you to your son. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Joe. Um, so I made a mistake at Mark discovered looking over the minutes, trying to just put in the few edits from September. And um, we actually had one vote where nobody did the I didn't get a motion in a second before we voted on it. There was a lot going on and, and um, I, I didn't do that quite right. So question, it was the 31,000 for the town hall columns. So do we wanna just make a motion in a second now or just to have it or, um, and if people- are we, wanna, gonna, are we gonna adjust the September's meetings? Is that what we're doing? Well, yeah, I was going, yeah, I was going to send out the minutes and I saw that I had in red some placeholders for who, who made the motion and who seconded it. And I couldn't remember, I didn't have it in my notes. So I went back and watched the video and uh, <laughs> not to throw you under the bus, Edwin, yeah. but I'm watching the video and Mary's conducting the meeting and all of a sudden you turned and said something to your wife or something. And we were all listening and I could see Mary turn and then Mary comes back and says, all right, shall we vote? So I think you distracted her and she Probably. jumped right over the uh, motion. And the My mistake, not yours. <laughs> yeah. So I, if I would motion. make a motion to um, go forward with all that we agreed and voted on back uh, in September, right? Um, yeah. Do we want to amend amend the September min minutes? I will. I will. Okay. Does anyone want to second that? Sure, I will. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andy. Do we need to vote on it? I guess we should because it's new information. <laughs> if there's a motion, we have to vote. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hi, Cassandra. Hey, Cassandra. Um, so we'll vote to... Uh, amend the minutes with um, Mark made the motion and Andy seconded. And this was for the 31,000 for the columns that was already approved. Um, should, any discussion? Should, I don't know if we're parsing hairs here. Should someone make the motion who was on that committee back then? Because I don't think Andy was on the committee in september right yeah i don't i don't think just in my opinion yeah i don't think we have to make the motion and the second we just have to acknowledge the error okay. and say that the project okay you know is it doesn't matter. Is normal okay so yeah. does that mean that's, we're in... that's what i would suggest yeah so that's not taking a vote well we're... no we're, we're taking a vote to acknowledge the error yeah. And to and state formally that the project can proceed. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
All right. Thank you. We'll get the minutes up on the website. So it's nice to have them. And thank you, Mark, for catching that. Yeah. Um, treasurer's report. Um, so we did get more money. <laughs> I'm going to jump in, Cassandra, for you. We, Cassandra and I still haven't, it's, everything kind of happened so fast this time with getting the information from the town. So hopefully for the next one, we'll, we'll um, switch over. But let me um, just share this real quick. Um, as long as I share the right one. I know if that's too open. That's good. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. Um, so we did get some more money. Um, the the state gave us another ten thousand dollars. Of the ten million that they were putting out there, they brought us up to a hundred percent. So there was just a handful of towns that were in the nineties that they brought up to a hundred. Most towns went from thirty nine percent to forty three percent because they weren't at the full three percent. But we they brought us up to a um, to the full 100,000 or 100 percent rather so um that's fabulous um but what i did here was this is and i this is now a green that even the set asides is a green with the town um so open space is 121,000 historic 45 housing is 133 we keep 500 in reserve so available general, which could be used on any one of those three, is the million seven fifteen. Now we voted last time to put fifty thousand um, in each of the set asides from the, the fiscal year twenty two funds, um, and then we're if we vote to claw back the money, um, which we talked about last time, the extra right. left over from the cemetery. Um, and I think there was one other, it's 37,000 and that all actually goes back into historic. So, um, so there's, here's approximate, if we do all that, um, here's what the new funds will be. And then if we vote on what's before us tonight, they can come out of historic and open space and we still have funds. So there's just a quick, quick look at it. Um, and we do have the highest, you know, last year was the highest, um, we got, you know, a whole lot of funds. Um, I don't understand the earnings and investment. I just don't, and I, I have to ask the treasurer more about how come it can go from 60 to 114 to minus 1300. So I, you know, I, I'm looking at the figure here, the subtotal of what was the, town paid and what the state paid for the CPA. Right. Um, so anyways, let me stop sharing, but that's a quick, quick update. Um, uh, I have a question. Yes. Should we raise the set aside to 51,000? So it's 10% of the total. So the, the set asides are, uh, are supposed to be 10% of our budget for the following year. Um, we certainly could, um, you know, it, whether it's 51 or 50, I'm not sure it's, you know, we don't know exactly what it'll be next year. Hopefully, hopefully the towns will be certainly at least as high as it was this year. We just don't know quite what the state will be. Um, but we certainly could if people, if anyone wants to make a motion, um, mm -hmm. where's the... Oh, let's go on then. Okay. Um, so we have two applications before the CPA. And Greg, we certainly appreciate. I just got that this afternoon and sent it around to everybody. So I'm not sure you've had a chance to look at it, but he gave a lot more detail on um, the play structures and I can try to put some of that up um, on the screen. And also I noticed, um, Greg, you increased the, the price a little bit too. Total is 48,142 and funding request is 24,000. 
oh seven five point thirty. I I'm good at rounding off <laughs> numbers a little bit, so maybe twenty four thousand one hundred for um just because it, it tends to make it easier to work with over over the years. Um, if that's okay, <laughs> um, but let me. Let me go back to the email. So, um, I guess I, I've sort of jumped into the see, the park and rec one. Should we start with a motion first before we discuss it? Right. Uh, shouldn't we approve the funding that was in the original article of uh, in the original application? No, I think we should vote on the amended one. Oh, um, I don't know. I I didn't have a chance to review the re amended article, well, the amended at, one. Let's look at it now. Okay. Let me um, let me share the screen again. Yeah, I can. Have so many screens open, I'm afraid I'll give you the wrong one. But here's um, some equipment product descriptions. Great. Slide Mountain featuring three exciting slides. <laughs> um, Greg, maybe you could unmute yourself and talk a little bit more about this. Sure. Um, the Slide Mountain, that's the larger uh, five to 12 year old playscape. Um, the adjustments in the, in the funding request were the um, two to five year old playscape. There's a there's a little better one. There's about I think two thousand more that I think was a lot more bang for the buck and it was just a lot better product that I wanted to um, get that one as opposed to the first one that I put in. Um, the other additional is like seven hundred for one set. It was around seven hundred for the sets for the footers to because we have to get those playscapes put into the ground. So they come, they don't come with it. You have to buy all that hardware to install the playscapes is a separate purchase. So um, there, there was that. And then also initially I'd had four benches, but in looking at the map and spreading stuff around, um, I had added an additional park bench. So really those, it really it came to like 2,500. It was, it was a little bit more, but I think that's a pretty significant improvements for the, for the cost. You've got several benches and table and a canyon, <laughs> which sounds like a playscape. Yeah, Carson's Canyon is the name of the two to five year old play, play set, and uh, Slide Mountain is the name of the five to 12 year old play set. And then you've got this. Uh, I'm going to get the right one here. I have to open them up first. So here's, can everyone see this okay when I open it up? Oh yeah. Okay, it's very small um, right here, but let's see. Oh yeah. Oops. Oh, that's bigger. Yeah, uh -huh. except I have to get the right spot. Is that a little better? Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, then, how much was the price? 17412 for the Carson's Canyon. And then <clears throat> there's a um, pergola or, um, for 2100 and some benches. A gazebo uh, that's going on a slab, is, that an, is it going on an existing slab? Yes. Okay. That looks nice. New benches. That's the slide down. Yeah, that's the bigger one. What is it? Go ahead. Is the bigger one the one you've decided to go for, or are you getting both? Yeah, confused. we're getting both of those. The oh, smaller okay. one is actually the one we changed. Um, okay. What's the green? That's for climbing up. Looks like correct. 
footsteps, footholds. Okay. I wouldn't slide down that one. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's just another climbing access point to the, to the slides and everything. Right. There's stairs and there's that point and there's like the uh, swirly one that they can climb up and climb around. Right, because there's always a kid that wants to run up the slide, but now right. they can go up the, got it. That's my kid. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I think they still go up the slide. <laughs> I'm 60 and I still go up the slide. <laughs> what is the surface going to be under it? What are you going to put under the... It's already, um, I believe wood chips are already out there. It's already got the surface and everything. So that would be a, that's a big cost that we're avoiding because it was already done. Okay. So it's, it's nice that that stuff's already set up out there. And then you've got the... Um... Yeah. That's the total. And then the last one to open up and share is um, the plot plan. Um, which again, oh, yeah, and I'd sent that map to too, kind of how everything laid out. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, so the road the parking lot is here, the road is here and here. The sliding hill is here, which I know there was concern about, you know, would there be anything out there? Um, so you have a bench here and a bench and the concrete slabs are already there and a bench here. And the picnic bench and gazebo are here in the middle, which is nice. It's near the two playground areas. Right. Yeah, we have the, it's, it's kind of right in between those two. And then I have a bench set up on, uh, on the other side okay. next to each of those. Very nice. And I know somebody last time had asked about drainage. Um, if you had any concerns about water or drainage, if there are any issues. With the surface that's there, there shouldn't be. Is this, is this going to add any, anything to the budget of the town of Hadley to the DPW for maintenance and taking care of this project? And are those paths going to be plowed in the wintertime? Is what I'm, what was, I'm sorry. Are those paths going to be plowed in the wintertime? And does it add to the budget of the town of Hadley for the DPW to maintain this project? Um, th this shouldn't add any additional costs. Um, I mean, there's, there, there may be some basic maintenance on the, on the playscapes just to be sure they're safe, but like I said, everything's already kind of set up out there just to add these pots, to, to add the equipment. Okay, are those uh, walking paths going to be plowed in the wintertime? They're not currently being plowed. Okay, so... Um, you generally in parks that I see, that's not something that's that's usually maintained during the winter for, for those playscapes. Okay, good. Thank you. I, you know, I mentioned this to my um, son and his wife who have little ones, and and my daughter-in-law said, you know, when she was out on maternity leave and wanted to take her little ones to a um, playground in Hadley, if school was in session, there was no place to bring them. And um, they thought this was a great idea. Um, so does somebody want to make a motion to approve the, the new total? Um, 24,100. I would so move. Mark did. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Cassandra. I do. Um, I did hear back from Stuart. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Um, I did hear back from Stuart both by an email this afternoon and a phone call at six. Um, and he said that um, the park application certainly looks like a valid CPA project. All the improvements seem to fall under the definition of capital improvement from section two of the legislation. Capital improvement is reconstruction or alteration of real property that one material adds to the value of the real property or appreciably prolongs the useful life of the property. Two becomes part of the real property or is permanently affixed to the real property so that removal would cause material or damage to the property. And three is intended to become a permanent installation or is intended to remain there for an indefinite period of time. 
Um, he said the application he thought needed to have more detail, a, plot, a plan showing where the structures would go and what the structures were and a budget with line items. So Greg, that's exactly what you produced for, you know, for tonight, thank you. Um, so he said that, um, and knowing where the means and bounds are is good, just in case there's any questions. So, you know, we, the things he suggested that we got, you know, we did, um, we did provide. So we any have other, a motion and a second, yep. Yeah, any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Sandra, did you say aye? I seconded the motion. Oh, you did. Yeah. Well, you still got to vote. Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? Opposed no. unanimous. All right. So Greg, Greg, I think somebody Greg, behind somebody behind Greg voted yes too. I'm not sure. Who that was. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg, just a reminder, and I know Diane knows this. Um, we. It's a, to go any farther, you have to have a majority vote at the CPA, which you, you got a unanimous vote. Um, it now gets looked at by finance and select board. and, and um, But because we voted it, it'll be on the ballot. Um, and then it'll also show what their, their feelings were, their votes were, um, if it unanimous or not, or how they voted. But it doesn't need to be approved at town meeting before the funds would be available. Um, and that's usually the beginning of May. So sometimes with COVID, it's been a little, not always right then, but um, hopefully it'll be pretty much on track. So that's, that, that'll be the, and somebody needs to be there as I know Diane knows to um, present this. And if it's you, then um, please let me know if you're gonna be speaking, I'll, I'll let the moderator know um, just cause you're not from town. Cause the first step would be for people to say, that it's fine for you to speak, which is not an uncommon thing. So it's it's just that because you aren't a town resident, everyone has to agree. Um, so that's anything else to say to Greg or? Um, what's what's the final cost that we are approving for town meeting? Twenty four thousand one hundred. No, the final. Um, is, 48,000 and a little bit more. 48,000 plus. But we're funding, if we fund it, 50%. Right, right. 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 And that'll come out of the open space um, right. portion. So. And the money's going to Hadley Park and Rec? Correct, yeah. I would definitely encourage you to get your constituents, people who use park and rec services to come to the meeting and to speak and say that they're gonna use this. Um, it's a lot harder for town meeting to say no to people if the people are there. Okay. So just, just encourage people to come and speak up for it because we know there'll be people opposed to it. Yeah, okay, I will. And I've, I've received some feedback, some responses from people who are excited about it, so. Good, good. And you just need a majority vote, so it's not impossible. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> On the U.S. Senate. Yeah. All right. Well, the next application is from First thank Congregational you, Church. And thank, we you, have, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Okay, and so Greg, have... you, uh, Greg, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. We will not be offended. No. Um, John, we have John Schott here from the First Congregational Church, and um, John, I got a lot of feedback from Stuart, um, and I think one of his, he said they're just extra careful now when it's private and not public funds, and especially when it's a church, because there was a lawsuit in the town of Acton where it didn't as Andy said last week, there are three main criteria and this one meets all three. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, for whether CPA funds can, can do. And Andy, can you remind us what the three are? Oh boy. Um, yes. Uh, it can't be funding the mission, the proselytizing mission of the church. Um, not that this church does much proselytizing, but that's one. 
Um, it can't be any religious iconography, uh, and it can't be it can't be the room where worship services take place. Um, and then it's a little cold up there for a little cold up there, <laughs> right? And then it also has to be accessible to people in the town without having to go to the church. That's kind of like the fourth, the fourth one, and you you meet all of them, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, so the public can see and enjoy right, visually right. and audibly. Yeah. Right, right. The the twist is that, and we found this with the North Hadley Church, is that you're not supposed to give CPA funds for a building that doesn't have a uh, architectural restriction, but you can't put an architectural restriction on a church because that's the state interfering with the church. Right. So, but apparently they've worked that out. So, um, all right, let's... Uh, are there any updates or any new information you wanna share with us? Uh, other than the only thing I can really tell you is uh, we keep checking uh, up in that particular area and have noticed that the cracks seem to be getting larger uh, and, and, you know, larger really what I'm saying is they, if they're starting off at a quarter inch, they may be increasing by, uh, a, you know, somewhere about an eighth of an inch to a little bit more than an eighth of an inch uh, over a period of time. So there, you know, there is issues going on uh, up there. And I think a lot is having to do uh, not necessarily with the cold weather, but with the amount of, in some cases, we've been having some very high winds up in that area are coming across. And I think the stress being onto the structure is causing it to move around a little bit up there. And uh, the leaning, if you look from the back parking lot up to the uh, that particular area, it, you can see the lean on the steeple on the back part of the uh, area up there. Now, was I right in reading in the application that that was not the original location of the church? Did that mean church. that the building was moved from one location to another, or that's just well, not the, the first church building? Where you got the dike and on the common there, uh, just you know, going down towards Route 9 from where the dike is, the church was originally located there. Now, the only way I can tell you is, and I guess I would have loved to have been there at that particular point in time back in the late 1800s, uh, but they moved it as a single entity uh, on grease boards and uh, oxen. I don't know how they did that, but they did it. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, moved it back over uh, a foundation that they have built there to place it on, and uh, there it sits. I think partly a lot of it probably, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think a lot of it had to do with the uh, possibility of flooding in that area from the river. John, do you want me to chime in on this? <laughs> sure. Um, so the church was built, and I'm a church historian, so I've got a, the church was built in 1808 on West Street, and, and John's right, the first church built, this was the third meeting house, the first meeting house was right near the Hatfield part of the river, because it, Hatfield was part of Hadley at that time, um, but this one was built um, on West Street, and then in 1808, the population of Hadley had been shifting towards Back Street, which is now Middle Street, from what is Front Street, which is now West Street. And people had wanted the church to be moved and because the population center had shifted. And it was going to be moved halfway, but it ended up being moved all the way in 1841 to put it right next to the new town hall. The town hall had just been built. So, um, so I'm sorry, that, that was 18, 1848? 1841. 1841, yeah. Huh? 
but um, and they moved it. A farmer would you take a week and move his oxen would move the church, and then the next farmer would take a week and his oxen would move the church. And on Sundays, everybody just wherever the church was, they climbed up and went into the church and had church, <laughs> and then um, continued on. So um, <laughs> there's more to the story, but that's a quick. <laughs> Thank you. Incredible. And the, the weathercock on top was even from the mid 1700s that came over and, and was when this church was built was put on top of the spire and it got moved as well. So that's really another special part of it. Um, so any other updates, John? I can go on with a little more of what Stuart said. Mm, not that I can tell you right now. Okay. One point Stuart said is, whenever we're giving money to something that's private, that's not town owed, you have to think of how to protect the town um, from it. From Basically he said, so what some towns do is have a grant agreement, which we used for Golden Quartz windows, but also have in there that if the building is ever sold, the town is repaid because this basically increases the value of the, um, of the building and it's town, it's public funds being used to increase the value of the building. And then if it was sold, it's the church getting, or the private, if church or whoever getting the private, um, the private entity is getting the benefit of those funds. So he said, that's something that, you know, um, and he gave some examples, which he just gave this, <laughs> this tonight. So I didn't get a chance to, to look, but um, John, if we looked at doing something like that, would that be acceptable, do you think? Um, I believe that would be acceptable, yes. And the other thing he said is that there's a Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund. I don't know if you've heard of that at all. He no, said I have the not. The program is terrific, and the current grant rounds is underway right now. And he said most PC, most community um, preservation committees would require private organizations to also try this state funding source. And then he gave a link to... Um, to what it was. Um, right. Can you send me that information? Yep, I'll be glad to. Part okay. of it is how critical is this? I mean, you know, if you, if you, could you wait until the fall to do it before the CPA to see if you can get other grant funding or do you think that that's not near, that it's pretty critical or? Um, well, correct. I, I, I want to say it's not critical, but on the other hand, I just, I get to the, point of your know, major concern that there is too much going on up in that area and I really would hate to have anything yeah. happen whether it's you know it falling on the town hall or it falling inward towards the church etc and right. you know I, I worry a lot about you know with all the devastation that's going on in the South, et cetera, or in the Midwest for tornadoes or a hurricane coming up or something in that neighborhood. Uh, I just don't know how structurally that would yeah. uh, be if we had a, you know, a good, a good amount of wind coming through this area. Yeah, no, that's understandable. Right. Um, Cra cracks seldom fix themselves. Right. Correct. I mean, uh, one thing yeah. we could do is Go encourage ahead. you to still apply to this grant program if it's, you know, and if you were able to get some funds, then we could, you know, reduce what you might be asking for from the town. Um, or you'd have money for, for, the next, for the next phase of repairs. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, can I just Hi. shine in? Hi, Alan. Sure. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm speaking as a member of the Historical Society. Um, and I am, I'm familiar with that grant program that you referred to. Good luck, okay? <laughs> um, just applying for it requires pretty good knowledge of how to do grant writing. And the timing is never works right. I would say, yes, go ahead and look into it. And if you can get somebody with lots of spare time, to put in the paperwork, go ahead because there'll probably be more work down the road that you need to do in that on that building. And um, but I would not, I would not wait till the fall. I would I would support going 
I had now and getting something done. And we should all remember that this isn't just a church. This 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 building is so uh, so iconic. I don't think there's another building other than maybe Russell School and the Goodwin Library and maybe Town Hall. This is as iconic and important to the center of town. And also, this building was used as a school. It was used for town offices. It was the town mm -hmm. when it was built. So it was not just another religious building. It's probably the most important one in town. And we don't want to have that steeple crashing down and killing one of the select board, do we? Depends who. Well, okay. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so we want to, you know, fix something that needs to be fixed now and not wait till it gets unfixable. And we've been there on other buildings where that's happened. Right. Thank you, Alan. Alan, I hope you'll say that at town meeting. I will. <laughs> Good. And would um, would the the draft grant agreement cover this church steeple repair, or would we have to it, add it? So I think if we want it, I think it covers the one I, I did have a grant draft agreement, John, just to, for the committee, and I think that. I'd like to look at what Stuart suggested for putting some wording in there since it's private. Right. If the building were sold, the town would re the CPA fund would be reimbursed. Correct. Um, the funds. Correct. Correct. Um, that was, that I, was didn't, I didn't know. We don't have to vote on the grant agreement tonight, right? It's actually the select board that has to really be the one to approve it. So. Okay, good. Um, Thank you. That, yeah. We'll just say we'll just add in the language of the warrant that the agreement has to be signed before the money is right. released. Right. Okay. Um, but we'll work on getting that right done. The the other thing, John, I wanted to talk to you about is to stress that the church is putting in its own money for part of this for part of this work, which I don't think was clear in the application. Okay. Yes. So just make sure you say that. Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we uh, approve the um, the project. The one hundred thousand uh, dollars. One hundred. The... Right. Um, to the what are we calling you? The first, the first, first church, church, Adler, church of first congregational church. Um, uh, okay. on the on the successful uh, um, conclusion of the grant agreement. I'll second that one. Any other comments, Cassandra or Diane, Denise? Um, I don't have comments, but I appreciate all the history that is known from everyone in the group. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Look, we're unanimous, but any opposed? Abstain. All right, thank you. All right, John, we'll go forward and, and um, I'll send you over a draft grant agreement real soon for you to look over, but it really has to go through the select board. And, okay, um, that'll and, be great. And also, you know, it, it of course it has to be approved at town meeting um, in May before anything would, would go forward. Right. But um, thank you for being a good steward well, of the you. church. Thank you for all the help and all the uh, information and support. A good steward of the church building. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure things will go well at town meeting. Good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um. So we, the next thing we have is I'm trying to do our guests first. So um, the next thing we have, I'm going to go back to the. Um, report here and share it is some ones that are coming up. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me make it a little bigger. All right. So we have a few coming up. Um, and Alan, you're here. Thank you. Um, the cemetery two projects in red here are done and, and the money is can be returned. We talked about that, so we can vote on that in a minute. Um, 
And then the other one that was all set was the historic maps um, for the 760. The project was done and that's left over. So that can be returned. And then we have four items that, um, well, five items that should be done by either the 22 annual town meeting or June 20th, um, depending on how the language was on the last. These were extended and these were at the last meeting two years ago, annual meeting two years ago. So, um, Alan, are you here to talk about the library window and brackets? Uh, I can say a few things about it. What Do you want me to like say that now? Yes. Uh, so we had um, two pieces of of the Hooker building that were salvaged uh, when the Hooker was demolished for the new library that we managed that we salvaged, and um, those are the window, the round window that was in the front of the building, and the and two brackets that were holding up the um, the. Uh, uh, roof of the um, uh, side side door, some nice iron brackets. So we um, we received money from you folks uh, to restore those and preserve them. Um, and we've done most of the work. The windows was, was very nicely restored, repainted, fixed, and it is now hanging in the local history room in the library. Uh, what we do want to do is, is 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 put up a plaque or a um, uh, an, an information um, uh, some something that would explain a little bit of, about the history of the hooker and the um, and what that window and where the window came from. So people, when they see it, they'll be, they'll get the whole story. So we'd like to um, we're going to probably have something written up. We'll do that and. Uh, and probably framed or, or a plaque made for the hang in the history room. So we'd like to use a few more that we probably think about another hundred dollars or something like that would take care of that. Um, <clears throat> for the brackets, they were um, uh, sandblasted and pri <coughs> excuse me, primed. And that was actually donated. That work was donated, but we'd need to, we need to finish the painting um, and uh, and we have a place for them. We finally decided what to do with them. Uh, we'd like to put them, uh, attach them to the outside wall in the children's garden, and make a potting bench out of them. And uh, and uh, so, and with a little explanation of where they came from. So we would like to, uh, and we're investigating uh, doing that um, uh, this spring. And that we don't, we're not sure how much that will cost, but we're, we're certainly not going to spend any more than, what is it, $1,500 yeah. that $1, remains? Yeah. yeah. And if there's more than that, we will make up the difference. Um, so so we'd like to uh, proceed with that, those two things. Do you uh, think you're and, if we're not, if, and if we can't do it before the end, before town meeting, we just won't do it and the money will go back. Okay. All right. So we don't need to vote on an extension. That'll just be whatever it is. Well, if there's any money left over, we'll talk about it in the fall for a call back then. Okay, right. thank you. Um, right. as is. Um, now, Margaret is here. Uh, Alan, did, before we do that, Alan, did you have anything else to talk about? Uh, I don't know, you tell me. I, I think you're good. I have a question. Okay. About the, the MAP project. Um, yeah. Whatever happened to them? The, the maps are yeah. now in in the in the case. You, you saw what they looked like when they came back, right? They were in, in that in, nice in, case, in the box. Case, yeah, in the box. They are in the building commissioner's office. Okay. Okay. Somewhere in town hall. Okay. Um, the the historical society um, approved some money to make a. To, to make a print, a framed print of one of the maps, the, the nicest one, which we just got back not too long ago. Um, and that's on display at the local, at the historical society, that map. And there's a write up about what the maps are, what they came from, what they mean. We'd like to, we'll probably have a program or something about them at some point. Um, so that's, yeah, so they're in, they're in, 
they're in town hall, the originals in their box. Uh, probably not the best place in the world for them, but there is no other place in town. Um, the problem is the boxes are pretty big, so you just can't put them in a map cabinet. And um, uh, so I don't know. Well, this, and that's not up to me. That belongs to the building department. Uh, maybe when they finish Goodwin, if they ever do, uh, and so they make some more room in town hall by moving some people over there, maybe there'll be some more room to properly um, you know, store these things. But we do have the print so people can, I think the, one of the things we wanted to do is have people look at them. Um, and, we, and we maybe could have them out every now and then, maybe at the library or something like that on display so people could, could take a look at what they look like because they, they are quite interesting. Um, and we have the, the print that was actually Mary's, uh, Rick, Rick Thayer was kind enough to take a, a good qual high quality photograph of that. And we had a, um, an archival print made of it um, in, in Northampton and uh, framed. I think the total cost was about $250, but the Historical Society uh, agreed to pay for that. And, and we, have the, uh, we have that print. Okay, um, Alan, uh, has anything been done with the? Uh, I assume it was a digital uh, image that was made of it. Is could that be made available to the library? So if someone wanted to go in, yeah, if the, if the library had a digital um, uh, program, and we actually are, uh, um, Patrick Razo, the library director, has contacted the Boston Public Library to uh, see about digitizing. Uh, um, many of the documents that we have in the library, and we and that can be done from free. Apparently, uh, the problem is you have to ship them all the stuff, and they uh, and they put it on a website. So it's it's a little, it's not perfect, but it may be one way to uh, get things digitized uh, um, by by you know the library and other people who are who have important documents. But the prints themselves are already digitized. Um, and um, uh, we could pass, I'm trying to think of where we could put them. We don't, we have a website for the Historical Society. No, I'm sorry, we're, we have a Facebook site and we put things on it every now and then, but there's no one place we could go. We, we're not that advanced quite yet um, to having things digitized, but that would be a good candidate for sure. Um, yeah, I thought if the library had access to, to those, you know, I could go in, you know, any public, any member of the public could go into the library, open up that file and you could scan in and really. You wouldn't them. have to, you wouldn't have to go into the library. You just, you know, you go online. on the website. Online, right. But our website's not that sophisticated to, to do that quite yet. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's a great idea. I will, and I'll talk to Patrick about it. Maybe there's some way we could, maybe even on the town website have a link to it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there also has to be an explanation of, because you're just looking at this thing and you don't really know. It, it, you have to have uh, a guide um, to explain what portion of Hadley the map represents, how it came to be, and, uh, you know, a translation of the archaic writing that's on it and all that good stuff. Yeah. Right, well, but that's, a good, that's a good project for us to think about. Right. When David Nixon first showed me the maps, there was no information about them at all. Yeah. Um, do you know if the conservation report was included in the box with the maps? It is. It is. Okay. And then maybe you yep. can arrange to put this information that you're talking about also yep. in there. Yeah. I actually, I mean, I have, I have a, I wrote up a, uh, a description. Um, it's in the historical society along with the conservation reports. And that's, tucked in a file uh with with the print so i mean if we have we're having open houses now i think uh, our next one is february 4th somebody anybody wants to come by we they can look at this stuff um physically um but uh you know i think it would be certainly would be great if we had this available on on the internet yeah i mean i i had them here in the house for a few months before we got them, you know, after I picked them up and before I got them to Dee Dee and, uh, or actually to you, Alan. And uh, it was, it was fascinating to look at them. Yeah. It's, 
I mean, you have to, I, I mean, I don't know if you have to be a history buff. I am a history buff. And it just chills up my spine to think that this thing is 350 years old and it represents, I mean, it's identified. You can see where, you know, how the town got divided up or that part of the town by this Nathaniel Kellogg, the surveyor. And uh, not much has changed, actually. I think, Edwin, your property is on that, on that map. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And I don't think the I don't think the lot lines have changed that much. <laughs> they probably haven't. That was before GPS. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was GPS. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully uh another 350 years. Yeah. Right. Oh, thank you, Andy and Alan yeah. both or, and Mark for helping. Yeah, and out. Andy and Mark deserve a lot of the credit for, for, for spearheading that whole project. Yeah. I just did legwork. Andy did all the all the brain work. <laughs> all right well that's great well well you have till june 20th for the library windows and then the extra from the historic maps will come back to the back to the cpa fund um margaret thank you for being here from the board of health to talk about the the 1220 dollars that are still left in the um from the june 2020 annual town report for water testing. Thank you, thank you, Mary. Um, and to the um, CPA. Uh, so this, um, this required some digging back for us because um, right now we are just two people on the Board of Health while one of our members is out on leave. And, um, and we don't have, you know, I, I, I'm only, I'm, I'm new, so we were starting, trying to dig back and find out why it was that this amount of money of $1,500 was requested um, uh, from the CPA for water testing. And I tried to get some background information from it. And I um, was able to get in touch with Jason Johnson, uh, Friends of Lake Corner. But it hasn't been entirely clear um, why this amount of why the why this figure w was uh, chosen, how it was arrived at, uh, and if the um, you know what the expenses are moving forward. Um, apparently, Jason Johnson and the friends of Lake Warner have been doing biweekly sampling of Lake Warner and the Mill River. Um, and last year's, I, I think the testing only came to about 200, almost $300. Um, so leaving a significant amount of money on the table. I suspect that because of COVID, many things just weren't done because things weren't done. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I don't know if there was another 300 that should have been used uh, in the year uh, 20, you know, it, you know, how much should have been used in 2020. And then we know what was used in 2021. Um, so basically we are asking for an, to, to have an extension if possible, um, uh, because we wanted to find out if there are other expenses uh, for testing bodies of water beside Lake Warner and Mill River. Jason has suggested that the DPW has been involved in the past. I don't have any knowledge about that or any water idea. testing being done. Does, it, is, does that sound familiar to anyone? No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, I mean, the uh, DPW does our town wells, right? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently the stormwater permit does that seem to have any? Okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, as, as I recall, uh, our our debate on this, which I don't always remember correctly, uh, there was a new unfunded mandate from the state about testing recreational water bodies. Uh, and the Board of Health wanted to test more than just uh, the North Hadley Pond. Um, uh, the, um, the ones near uh, Hampshire College, and I think the Connecticut River. 
We're also up for testing. I'm trying to remember one, He's two, three. New Hampshire College is that the reservoir? Yes, the right. reservoir. Yeah, yeah. And okay. Um and uh, that was the nude bathing beach. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. What I've um, seen when I go by on my mountain bike. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to remember where else. I don't recall. Uh, and I think it was three three times a year. Could have been. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. Testing for the Connecticut River and um, uh, the reservoir. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And the the friends, of course, only did uh, the North Hadley Pond. Right. Um, and I and know the, Jason. I know Jason tested the Mill River a couple of times. I don't yeah. know how often he did it. Three times a year sounds right. Yeah, uh, the Board of Health was going to sort of pick up the responsibility, mm -hmm. which of course you've had your hands full <laughs> three times over since then. Right, and and our predecessor, I believe, was the one who was spearheading this. Right, and um, so I'm not sure what was happening with that, but uh, obviously that didn't happen. Um, so yeah. I I tried to find out from Jason how much money he required for going ahead with testing for this year, and wasn't able to get a very firm answer at this point. Um, you know, and I think he wanted further testing regarding the stormwater drainage uh, from the, from, you know, bacteria testing. Um, uh, I don't so, know. I'm sorry, go ahead. I don't know if that's an approved use. I honestly don't know. Okay. So, Margaret, um, I'll chime in a little bit here. I, I was at that meeting um, two years ago when Emma Dragon came before us. And um, see, and this, what I have to say is absolutely no reflection on the Board of Health because I just admire the energy and time and amazing work you've had to, to do. But CPA funds are not supposed to be used for regular maintenance items, um, right. they're for capital things. And when Emma came, it was spelled out that this is really a stretch. And, and she said, we were a backup in case the town did not put it in their budget and the budget was especially tight as it often is. And so we proved it very reluctantly in case the town didn't put in their, um, put in the funds for this in the budget. And, and I remember Andy really, as chair, really stressing, you know, this is it. This is <laughs> the last time we're going to do this. So, it's um I think what I would I would like to see happen is, you know, you have until June 20th to do whatever normal testing you would do that could be these funds are approved. And sure. I'd really like to see the Board of Health get in their budget and the town put in their budget funds to do the testing they need to on an ongoing basis because it's it's not it's not a use for the CPA funds. Sure. Um, okay. you know, we kind of again we were just the backup which because we had approved it i think it was very easy for the town not to put it in the budget but um i, That's what I, I remember have, too. I right. have a hard time with um it's it's really a matter of trying to be fair and consistent and make sure we're following the laws as we understand them to be right. um, again it's oh, no reflection yeah. on the board of health i think what i i think if i'm understanding this correctly the money should not be used for normal normal testing of things that need to be tested. Normal operating expenses. Normal operating expenses, very recurring. Recurring, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um, yeah, and, and right now we are actually, uh, you know, trying to actually get an inspector. The Board of Health has no inspector, mm -hmm. which is, um, yeah. is what we are fighting to have because we have, a lot of needs in the town um, for a full-time inspector, um, and yeah, at this point, I don't. I'm not sure what we are going to get if we're going to get anything. Um, so um, I I hear you. Um, maybe if we can at least uh, 
see what we use up then until um, June 20th. <laughs> and and um, with the understanding that we will need to return the money. Right. Okay. Does anyone feel otherwise or anything nope. else they want to say? Uh, yeah, I do. I think um, it's been extraordinary circumstances with the uh, pandemic. Um, and I think that we, it was an important, uh, uh, important enough for the town to pass it. And I think that if the uh, Board of Health thinks that they can use the money, that we should extend it. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, Margaret, while looking at my computer, I found the original proposal. Oh. Uh, if you'd like for me to send it to you. I would love that. We have you know, been scrambling because we have not been able to get any of these documents to yeah. see what what the intent was and that sort of thing. That would be that would be great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it says, um, oh, I just had it. Oh, I lost it. Anyway, it looks like I remembered correctly that it was the three. Um, North Hadley Pond, the Connecticut River, and the reservoirs for, the, for those three places. But I'll 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 refine them and I'll I'll send them to you. Thank you, Andy. Andy or anyone? I mean, do you want if you want? Yeah, yeah uh, sure. Well, I want I want to make a motion that we uh, recommend an extension. I second the motion. Is there any further discussion? I guess we've heard that it's something that we're <clears throat> a little queasy with because we're aware that it's not a in compliance with the guidelines of, of the funding, but we're also sympathetic that the Board of Health is not being properly supported elsewhere in town. I'm not sure how I feel about us continuing to do this so that others don't, you know, they should be funded elsewhere. Uh, and do we bend and put ourselves in legal jeopardy? I don't know. No, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. You know, yeah. Cassandra, do you want to, um, I was just going to say to that point, um, I, I understand that point and I agree. And um, like we always remind ourselves, we are an advisory committee. So if we vote to approve this to go to town meeting, then the town really does get the final say on, on how they feel about spending their money. And I just um, tend to lean with Andy in this instance that it gets really exhausting talking about the extenuating circumstances that have been so pervasive for going on two years now, but they have definitely affected boards of health everywhere. And um, I'm not sure it's the best time to sort of step back and say, somebody is gonna do it. Let's see how far we can let them fall before somebody else picks up the slack. I, I would just lean towards extending our, bending a little bit more until things sort of I hesitate to even say settle down find some sort of new normal way of operating and normal things that we need mm -hmm. Denise or Diane do you want to chime in you don't have to but no. <laughs> make sure you have the chance <laughs> thank you uh, you're, you're muted and we can't hear you, Diane. It doesn't look like you're muted, but we can't hear you. It doesn't look like you're muted through Zoom. You might be muted through your device. <laughs> it isn't helping. <laughs> you, you can write something in the chat if you. Or you can call in on your phone too. or you can call your senator. They don't have good internet at the beach. 
microphones cutting out all that wind. Right. That was a, that was this. Okay. Denise, any, any. Couldn't, couldn't see the chat. Did you make sure you sent, did you do that? Oh, you're having a bad internet day. You're having a bad zoom day. Yeah. Um, I, didn't... I would just say that because we've already passed it um, before and we've granted other extensions, I would, I'll vote to support an extension on this. Diane says she agrees with helping out right now. Right. You don't see the chat. Well, we have um, a motion and a second. And um, all those in favor say uh, yes. Of granting the extension. Of granting the extension for one year. Yes. We have. Oh, for uh, the time limit is for one year? Right. So it'd be I'll, like I'll May. Vote for the time limit. Yeah. And then I'm I'm going to be the one opposed. Whoops, there you go. I'm going to be the one vote opposed. I think. Um, just okay. Follow the CPA, but I certainly I certainly absolutely admire the the Board of Health and what you're doing. So it'll be it'll be on the town to vote for an extension. Right. Thank you, and thank you uh -huh. to, uh, to the board members. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Do you remind me who made the motion in the second? Was it Andy? Andy, and Andy the motion. Now, it, granting an extension is usually put in the consent part of town meeting, so there may not be any discussion uh, about it at all. Okay. But you should come prepared to defend it in case somebody has any questions. Okay. Thank you. Right. Very good. Well, good I'm luck sorry. with it. So the so Andy had the motion, and the second was Cassandra. Cassandra. Was it Cassandra? Okay. Thank you. And it was all in favor except Mary. I wavered, but I <laughs> I caved at the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, board members. I really appreciate. Thank it. Thank you for everything you do, Mary. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. It made a, made a big difference. <laughs> and good luck at town meeting. We tried to treat you with respect. Absolutely. Appreciate that very much. And admiration. Thank you. All right. So the remaining ones that are coming up um, all have to do with the building. And I did ask um, Tim Nyhart to come a couple times and hopefully have updated budget information and scope of work. And, and at this point, I have no new information. Um, and I see Tim is not here with us tonight. Um, I don't know what to do with these. Um, should, we, should we, as a committee, come up with like a boilerplate letter to saying, if you want the money, you have to come to town meeting and ask for your own extension. I don't see why we as a committee have to approve all of the extensions. Personally, I think that if we come up with a boilerplate letter and distribute it to the, uh, you know, to the building committees and to the people who are going to run out of time, then it's up to them to ask for an extension. It's not up to us. That's the way I feel. I think the CPA doesn't have much follow through stay, but one of the things we do have is trying to figure out what's going on when a project's coming due. So I hate to give that up. <laughs> no, I, I don't I don't want to give it up, but if a project is coming up and it, they, they haven't used the money in two years, then they lose it and they have to reapply. It's simple. It's, you know, I did send them, I sent you a copy of it. I did send them the letter in November saying, would you please let us know by January 1st, if you're going to, if you're done and we can return the money, which, you know, Alan responded to right away and, and other people did as well. And, or do you need more time or have you given up on the project? So the money can come back or will you spend it all by June, by whatever date, annual town meeting or June um, okay, good. Thank you. So I did send that out and I did get a, a, a report. Tim, I called Tim and did
did get a um, a report, which I think I read last time, which mm -hmm. said the Russell School, they need to meet with the select board to determine if they wish to use this money to partially fix some of the roof leaks. It won't fix all the roof leaks. Some is better than none. We right. will give your committee an answer on this article soon, which we did not get. So, okay. the, so the 8,000 for Russell is like a drop in the bucket. I mean, they need to button it up to preserve it or decide what to do with it, or they need to fix roofs, leaks, but, you know, it's hard to know the 8,000. Now the 8,000 was already extended a year. Um, mm -hmm. It was originally 2019. Right. Fresh town meeting. Um, but um I don't know. I don't know what to what to say on this. I'm hoping you guys have have thoughts. Well, my thought would be that if they lose the money, then they can reapply. As simple as that. It's pretty basic uh, figures, you know. Use it by use it by annual town meeting twenty two sure. or or sure it, it will, by by whatever the date is saying. Yeah. If they say no, we're not going to do anything. What, what do we have to do? We're, we're an advisory committee. So we just say, well, you can reapply. What was that? I see you, Alan. Um, go ahead. Mary, who did you who did you reach out to to get get the um, um, update on? I did to um, I did to Tim Nyhart and to Carolyn Brennan. Okay. Um, the town administrator, and I there was one other person that was on the original. Um, I'd have to look back on the email on the application. Yeah. Okay, I think it's important it was to the municipal municipal building committee. Right. Well, that's Tim. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm on the committee too, but I think they've met once in the last year, and I haven't heard a thing um, about either the Russell or Goodwin. Uh, I know that they were working uh, with a uh, an architect uh, to develop a scope of work for the Goodwin, and that's last I heard, which was months ago. That was supposedly moving along. I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't, uh, you know, and seen the light of day yeah. here yet. And I would, I mean, this is something that Carolyn. Is on her. It's on her. I mean, Tim's just like you. I mean, he's a, a volunteer committee, advisory committee. He doesn't put um, bid documents uh, out on the street. That has to be done by the procurement people in town hall. Okay, which Carolyn is. She's the chief procurement officer. So, what are they doing? Do they have a scope of work? Is it going out to bid? I'd ask her directly. I did talk to her about it and she said that they need to, you know, come up with a plan on how to um, at least stabilize it, you know. Uh, well, no, no, I'm not talk, talking about Goodwin. Oh, okay. No, we're still on Russell. Yeah, well, that, as somebody said, that's a drop in the bucket to what needs to be done in Russell. And that's a bigger, surely that's a, that is a bigger question. But they have, they have enough money and they know what they, they need need to do to get Goodwin going. And that's running. That isn't, isn't that time running out too this year? Well, or do so we have another year? So there's two things on Goodwin. There's the 25,000 for um, phase two study, which is I think mostly the elevator. And right. like, he says, this is an ongoing project and requires continued funding. The project requirements are being prepared with the hope the town can solicit professional services for completing the project specifications right. for early spring. So it sounds he thought both of these, the Goodwin would at least get the spring to um, to you know be looked at. So the elevator study, and he said with COVID, the engineering firm has been backed up and behind. Yeah. And okay, so you, all right, that that makes sense. So that's you know whether or not they'll get that done by June twentieth. You know they may need a little more time for that. Um, I, I would say they would definitely going to need new time if they have not gone out to bid because they're going to have to go out to bid on the Goodwin. This if is, they haven't gone this out to bid the yet, elevator study for the twenty five thousand. Uh, that. And what 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 about the two hundred and eighty thousand on for oh, the building yeah, itself? There's the the other one is the two hundred and twenty three thousand five hundred. 
He says, this is an ongoing project and requires continued funding. Um, the specifications are nearly complete, so it hasn't gone out for bid. And right. we're hoping uh, that the my point here is that bid within the next month. Repairs and remodeling should begin early spring. Okay, so good. Sounds, but that, I doubt it will finish by June. Right. So it sounds like he's hopeful that both are okay. um, going to be done. Whether or not what was voted on, um, that 223 was annual town meeting 2020, whether or not the same price, the same money will get the same, you know, two years later, right. prices have gone up so much for so many things. It's, that was one of the questions for Tim was, is it, you know, is it doable? But Well, they, they won't know until they go out to bid. Right. That, so, that's what, that's the next step. They have to go out to bid on something and, and get yes. and find out how much it's going right. to cost. They may well come back and say, we need more money or we need more time. Yeah. I think that's, that's almost a given. Right. And, and I certainly you, wouldn't pull a plug on this. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to have the Goodwin repairs done. And in both of those, he said that he, he thinks they'll move right along this spring. So yeah, well, that sounds good. It, what do other people think about um, voting to? I, I personally think the if we're going to do an extension on the, the big project, the 223,000, we should probably do it for two years because mm -hmm. I hate to be here again in a year yeah. with it almost done, but I don't know. Well, yes, I think indeed. we ought to have a, a, a boilerplate. I don't think it's up to the CPA committee to uh, offer extensions. It's up to the, it's up to the applicant to, Proposed to the town meeting that they, whatever for whatever reason, then they need an extension of one or two years, whatever you know. I don't know what what, what we what our guidelines are for. Do we just give one year extensions or what? I I honestly don't know. I don't know what it says in the CPA uh, minutes or anything. Andy? Um, just to answer your question, Edwin, um, mm -hmm. we can decide how long the extensions are because it's our rule about the time limit. So if we want to, if we want to give a one year extension or a two year extension, you know, it's, uh, it's, or suggest the extension to town meeting really is, the, is really what yeah. Okay, yeah, um, we can, we can uh, suggest it, yeah. And my, my opinion is that for the library building, we in effect got this letter, which is asking for the asking for an extension, saying that it's an ongoing project and it continues to need, even though it doesn't have the word extension in it. Mm -hmm. I feel okay. like it's been asked for. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with the Russell School, we've already given them one extension. They have not asked for a second one, and there's no sign that the work is proceeding. So right. I think that one we should claw back and that we should give extensions for the other two. And once the discussion is finished, I'll make that motion unless somebody changes my mind. No, I, I, I would tend to agree that, uh, that I think we should not be seen as a beneficial aunt who will take care of you. You know, if you want, you know, we have funds that we administer. If you're not gonna, you know, be able to properly request them and ex and, or an extension, then we should follow our procedures and claw back. I would I would yeah. join you on that, Andy. If, yeah. if, you, if you make the motion, I will second it. Yeah, and hopefully they'll come up with a, a plan for Russell and maybe come back before, you know, the CPA in the fall for yeah. budget items and line items and, you know, estimates that, that make sense. Um, well, there's, there's definitely a faction that does not want any money spent on the Russell School. And they've somehow managed to stall this or to slow walk it. Um, and because it was supposed to be an emergency, <laughs> you know, uh, 
and they just want the building to be ruined, so it has to be torn down. Um, okay. But that's not the politics that we're here to solve. Right. Question on procedure. Let's say someone, you know, we vote tonight to claw it back. <clears throat> and let's say someone who didn't let us know they couldn't make it here tonight to, to be heard watches this on Hadley Media and reaches out to us before the warrant and says, oh, oh, we really do want, want to do X, Y, Z. Do we have the wherewithal to have a, n another special meeting and, and change that? Or can Mary as the, as the chair, you know, re re no, I guess we would have to have an open meeting, right? Right. Yeah. I think we would have to have an open meeting and, I would suggest that we have a hard and fast deadline, which we Mary, Mary has done. Okay. And I think that if we for uh, and list in the meeting meeting notice that this is going to be for the extensions only, no new applications will be uh, accepted, and we just go from there. I think that's a fair fair uh, deal. And and. And the building committee will still have until the town meeting to spend the money. Right. They have till um, June. Yep. Yeah. I'm seeing which one this is. Russ, they have till June 20th. Annual town meeting 2022. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, wait a minute. Hi, Denise, Denise I, we can't hear go you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. there you okay, are. Okay, now you're there. Um, the $8,000 for the Russell School Building. They didn't acknowledge that. They just talked about the Goodwin. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, he, he basically said, in his, he didn't, you're right, he didn't say we'd like an extension on each, but he did say, you know, they, they 8,000 is better than nothing to fix the roof. He'll let us know soon, but um, right. we didn't hear. So, um, Are we ready to make a motion on these or we can still do discussion after that? Um, do you want to do each one separately or do you want to gang them or do the first, do the Russell School separately and do the library, the two libraries together? Sure, let's do that. Okay, well, I'll make a motion that we request town meeting return the $8,000 originally approved for the emergency repairs of the Russell School roof. I'll, I'll second that. Is that, um, are you wording that if it's not spent by the ATM or something? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I have a thought on that in that um, timing wise is tough. What if they spend it on May 1st? it's too late to, I mean, it's a lot of scrambling. I mean, one thing to do is not vote the extension and then ask for the claw back in the fall. Like, like with the library, we're doing that with the brackets because we don't know what the balance is gonna be. So they have till that time to spend it. And then in the fall, we can ask for the actual claw back for whatever is left over. Um, I think just makes it a little more manageable. Um, okay, I think that's better. I withdraw my motion. Well, don't we have to, because uh, we have an ending date and the annual town meeting, don't we have to just say uh, the CPA committee it moves to extend the, uh, the Russell School roof money until the special town meeting? I, I don't think so. If we're not if we're not extending it, we don't have to do anything. It just, there's an ending date built in. Right, there's an ending date. That's why that's why the ending date was put in, so that, if, that they, is, if they don't use the money, they lose it. Right. So in the fall, we can we'll know how much to ask to claw back because we'll know what the balance is of the eight thousand. Right. But now, but we have an ending date of the annual town meeting of twenty two, which is in May. So should we extend it to the special town meeting in the fall? That's all. We'll still run into the same thing if they haven't done it. Of, you know, oh. they may do it the day before that town meeting too. I think, I mean, I, I think it's hard to 
put stuff on town hall to maybe make last minute adjustments because something was spent the week before town meeting, I think is. You no, know, they had two problem. years to spend the money. They, they decided not to. So three years. We, you know, we don't, uh, we're just, we're just an advisory committee to advise town meeting how to spend their hard earned money. And that's all we are. So we have to abide by the rules and regulations in the CPA agreement. If the CPA agreement says annual town meeting of 2022, that's it. You either use the money or you lose it. They can, it's, there's no, they can reapply and get another $8,000 or 10,000 or whatever at a, and then they can put the as much of a, we can put an ending date on it as two years or whatever. You know, the simple fact that someone on the committee just didn't do their job is irrelevant. Right? And that's the way I feel. You know? But I think what Mary is suggesting is that instead of clawing it back before the deadline, because the deadline hasn't come up yet, that we wait till after the deadline and then we claw it back. Am I, am I right, Mary? Is that what you're suggesting? We'll know what the figure is. You know, if they go up and do $5,000 worth of repairs, we'll know there's 3000 left to claw back. Because we can't, we, I don't think we can say now to vote to claw back 8000 because they, they have till May 5th or whatever town meeting is going to be to spend it. So it's, it's just kind of the mechanics of trying to make it, mm. make it um, easy, but it's not giving them another extension. We're not doing that. We're just giving them the time that they had with the extension that we previously voted. Same thing we're doing with the library window and brackets. They have until um, yeah. 20th to spend the money and then whatever's left in the account will know the amount to claw back at the special town meeting. In the oh, fall. yeah. Okay, so we, so we don't really have to do anything. Right, exactly. We don't have to do anything and we can then follow up next meeting and right. see what's left. But right. if we do, right. I get you, I get you. Yeah. But if we do nothing, what prevents them from spending it in June, July, and August before we meet next? They won't have the money available. Yeah, oh, yes, they, yes, they will. Yeah, the town, the, the treasurer, I mean, the count. Not if we write a letter to it. the town treasurer, they won't have the money available. <laughs> Alan has his hand up. Yep. I see that. I was just making sure that yep. committee members <laughs> spoke. Go ahead, Alan. Um, maybe you could think about, uh, instead of just not saying anything or saying it's all going to come back, you could say whatever they don't spend by um, town meeting has to come back. Whatever's left. Yeah. Which is what Edwin had suggested. Yeah. it's. Um, I just think it's a little confusing for Sometimes the bills take a while to make it through <laughs> through the system. Right. That's yeah. You know, I. I um, so well, I'm gonna might... I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw my motion. Can I do that after it's been seconded? And suggest that we move on to the library. I'm sorry, that's my phone. Um, if that's still my second, I could withdraw my second. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So at this point, we're doing nothing with Russell School Roof. Um, it expires in... Um, 6 22 Well, that one, it, it actually expires at the annual town meeting. So right. Sometime in May. Right, yes, yes, yes. Um, one. So now we're on to the, the good ones. We've got the elevator study, and we've got the 223000 balance left for the repairs, which is basically trying to make it at least functional for town offices. Um, comments on that? You said you have said that they you, you consider what that whatever the letter or, or email that you got from NIHAC, you're considering that an extension request. Absolutely. But, yeah, we well, just hope to have more of a scope of work and budget update and stuff like that. But um, he did say, you know, they, it's definitely a priority and they, st they hope to get to it this spring. Um, well, maybe this will be the argument to light a fire under them and 
they'll get it done. You know, I don't know. Well, they, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's a question. And this is, I'm maybe speaking out of turn here. I, I really don't know the ins and outs, but my impression is that it's something that the town and the municipal building committee really wants to get done. The problem is administrative. There's just not enough bandwidth in town hall to deal with stuff like this in a timely way. It's not anybody's fault, really. It's just we don't have enough people. And uh, there's a lot of projects out there that they're trying to, you know, get rolling. And when you depend on volunteers and you have only a couple of professionals who do, who are dealing with, you know, the whole budget for the town and, uh, you know, personnel stuff and, you know, COVID stuff, it's just hard to get it done professionally and in a timely manner. So I think that's what's going on. And uh, I mean, I, it wouldn't hurt to say, come on, let's go. What are you doing? Let's get an update. And I think you've done that. You're trying to do that. And you, I would keep doing that. But uh, I, don't, I don't think I would, I would not uh, advocate or support, you know, uh, pulling the plug on a project just because, it, you know, things are sliding. This is an important thing to have the town done. We have the money. Uh, it's just a question of making, you know, getting to the finish line. Getting to the starting line. That's well, getting, yeah, getting to the starting <laughs> Well, no, they've yeah. started, to be fair. They've started. Okay. They just haven't gotten to the next next uh, milestone, which is to get it out to bid. And then you said the specifications are nearly complete, which is a lot of work, too. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, they hope that repairs and remodeling should begin early spring. So that means getting it out to bid, awarding the bid, and, and starting on the repairs. So, it you know, it certainly sounds like it's, the hope is that it'll it'll move along um and it's it's been tough getting contractors it's been tough getting materials it's just been a tough time to do construction yeah. work yeah um, i mean i i want to hear from other people too that to um time the amount of time um I mean, the elevator study seems like a year should be plenty i mean hopefully hopefully that will be done by Yep. you know, June, but at least, you know, I would think giving that a year, I think the Goodwin renovation, I, I personally think two years would be, um, would make sense just to, unless we would like to have more of an update in a year, but I, you know, there's a certain amount of how much do you bring before a town meeting if you think it really needs more, um, Any other thoughts or anyone want to make a motion? Denise? I was just, I agree that this is an important project and it's a big project. Um, so I think two years is a good idea. Um, I also, I'm not sure if the elevator study would be with the same people, like um, with the same contractors and if it would make, no, okay, just keep it separate. Um, but I think two years for the work is fair. Does anyone want to make a motion or? Um, okay, I'll, I'll, oh, Denise, you want to do it? Sure, I'll make a motion to extend the elevator study one year and the renovation work on the Goodwin for two years. I'll second that. Any other discussion? The only the only comment I have is that there the projects are linked and it might be good to keep them both two years just to keep everything in order. But I'm not going to make a motion to change it because it's not that big a deal. And they could always add they could request they could. that that extra year extension. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And it's an yeah, elevator study. Work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They already had two years to work on it. And if they didn't, um, you know, our hands are tied. What can we do? You know. So it's one year and two years, the extensions. Right. Just to be clear. Any other comments? No. All those in favor, say aye. Oh, Alan, hold on, we're voting. <laughs> no, let, vote, vote for us, go ahead. <laughs> um, it looks like 
Edwin, were you five, a, six? No, I'm not going to vote. I don't agree with this. So. Okay. All those I'm opposed? Just, it, it passed anyway, so. All those opposed? Do you want to oppose or oppose I'll this oppose one? It. So it's, it's six it's to one? Edwin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alan, do you want to add one? Yeah, more? I just have a comment on semantics. Uh, I've heard this project being referred to as a library project. This is the Goodwin Building Project. It's no longer a library. Right. Thank right. you. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's hard to get right. it up. All right, so I think we've gone over all the old ones. The water testing um, is going to be asked for a year extension. Um, and the library windows will run out, the school, Russell School will, roof will run out, and the um, Goodwin repairs, the Goodwin building memorial repairs will two year extension on the building, one year extension on the study. Historic mm -hmm. maps is being returned, two cemeteries are being returned. So we've taken care of all the ones that are coming up. Okay, um, good. On our end. Yeah, very good job, Mary. Very good, very good. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, next on the list is discuss and vote on the amount for the CPC expenses. We did the 50000 for the um, set-asides, but I forgot to do the CPC expenses last time, so we'll do it this time. Just um, so the CPA committee can vote every year for expenses, and they can vote up to 5%, which would be twenty five grand, which we obviously <laughs> don't need. And um, it's whatever we don't use in the year gets returned. It's no, we don't have to vote an extension. We don't have to vote a clawback. It's just there for the year. And then it's returned to the fund and then we vote again the next year. Okay. And it's supposed to be, you know, what our budget we think we'll be using. And I asked Stuart what, what gets used for this. And he said, you know, I mean, the city of Boston has 31 million in their CPA. So, you know, they hire engineers, they hire inspectors, they hire surveyors, they hire legal, they hire all sorts of things. Um, and he said, you know, if we wanted to have our attorney do something and it's coming out of CPA fund, we need some funds in there to do it, like this grant agreement for the church. Um, and or, you know, some towns have staff people and stuff like that. So um, we do have, and we just went through this $1,750 bill is our dues to the, the state coalition, which I think is a good deal. They, they are a huge resource for us. Um, so whatever we vote, $1,750 of that is already going towards that. Right. So... Um, I don't know. I, I was thinking we've usually done between three and five thousand. You know, I was thinking it might be good to do more towards the five thousand in case we do end up with some legal fees for, you know, like this grant. Um, Mark? Did we ever do the um, we were going to do the promotional signs that we could put up or banners that would say this was a, you know, uh, CPA funds supported this project or? Denise did a beautiful job with them, and um, I actually have them now. I took a picture of one of them to put on the CPA website page, and I've asked um, Golden Court to let us know when they're doing the windows, and we'll pop one up there, and the church with the grant agreement will, you know, have the same thing, a temporary sign while the work's being done. Mm -hmm. So um, unless we want more. Um, okay. I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you, Denise. Yes, thank you. Um, what were our expenses for last year? Do we know? We do not know. They oh. still showed us as 3000 and I know the 1750 got paid, so I I don't know. I I wouldn't think it'd be over 2000 but that was without any attorney's fees, so it's kind of and again it just automatically gets returned. So it's not it's, it's, you know, it really isn't taking away from any projects because um, it just gets returned. So uh, I would vote, I would support a motion of $5,000 for the um, yeah. expenses. Nice to have it there. It, yeah. it, it's, it's not going to hurt not, any yeah. other projects. Right. 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 I would support that. Okay, good. Thank Is you. Is that a first and a second? Yeah, <laughs> that was a was. Was that a motion, Edwin? Yes, that was a motion. 
And I seconded it. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And no one's opposed, no one abstains because we all voted yes. Okay. Um, I sent around, I like in the annual reports when it lists all the committee members. And um, I think it's nice if it lists all the committee members for the committee members to say they agree <laughs> with the annual report. So mm -hmm. I, I did send it around. Does anyone have any comments on it? No, the only comment I have is just be very, very careful and ask to uh, have a, a draft sent to you um, before it's printed in the town report and that it gets printed as it is reported. Because okay. uh, Jennifer, Jennifer has a habit of uh, paraphrasing and okay. sometimes it doesn't come out to be what you want it to be. But I think you did an excellent job, Mary. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Edwin. Right. Sometimes the report is too many pages and she'll edit the reports so they fit on one page yeah. instead of two or two instead of three. Right. <laughs> and I tried to make it one page, but unless I made really big margins, a part of it is we passed so many projects. That's right. right. No, it's important to have the record of what the committee's done. Yes, yeah. it is very important. Do I, I didn't have a chance to look at it. Are there any graphics? I mean, or I guess they probably don't want that. You don't want graphic, graphics. No. You don't need them. I did put in here to look at the website for more information right. on what, what's been passed and how the money's being used and about the CPA. Um, all right, well, it's not something we need to vote on. I just wanted to give everyone a chance to, does anyone, is everyone fine with having the names all on there? Yep. Okay, great. You even okay. spelled my name right, thank you. <laughs> um, so welcome letters. Um, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about is how how does somebody that wants to apply, you know, do they feel like we're approachable? Do they feel like they understand the process? Do they feel like they get help from us? And, you know, Andy's been great with being very willing to help coach people, not coach, that at least meet yeah. with them if they want to. And and certainly people contacted me and, and I'm sure Amy and Edwin and others. Um, but I did send out last time a letter, which I gave you a copy of, um, just to new somebody that newly has applied, just so that they know how to what to do with the bills, and just a reminder that you can't spend it for other things than what was approved by the town, and they have to use it within that time period. And I put in there if they need an extension, then they need to contact the chair of the CPA to to you know discuss that more. So. Good. Um, just wanting people to feel like, you know, it's, they, they know what to do. So if anyone has any suggestions or nope. comments and. Um, Very good those. job, Mary. Very good. Right. Um, so only just a real quick nutshell. Um, just the Massachusetts coalition you probably saw had a webinar on bonding for CPAs and I just, I was curious, it was over lunch. So I just listened in and I thought I'd give like a two minute description of it. Um, so some towns certainly get bonding with their CPA money and it's basically usually cause there's a project coming up that there aren't enough funds available but the town really wants to do it and it falls under the CPA. And what a town can do is calculate how much they could borrow based on the town's portion of the CPA, you can't you can't use funds that you expect to get from the state. It's only what you expect to get from the town, and you can do a bond over like twenty years or thirty years, and it'll be X amount a year, and that would come out of that CPA bucket and general fund um, each year. And their closing costs, he said, it could easily be twenty or thirty thousand dollars to get ratings and all the legal and everything. So it's it's not something to be done lightly. Um, he said, if there's another project going on in town that's gonna be a bonding, then um, 
you can combine them in terms of the closing costs so it won't be as expensive, but the CPA portion always comes out of the CPA funds and always has to follow the CPA laws. Um, so anyways, Hadley's never needed it, may never need it in the future, but it's, you know, it's good to know it's, it's an option if something really big came that, um, and, you know, some towns just do it to spread out who's going to be paying for it. You know, if it's a 20 year bond, people 20 years from now are benefiting from it and, and they'll do it as, you know, so that they want more available now for whatever else might be going on. Um, but anyways, just, you know, Good. it was interesting to hear a little bit more about it. Um, Good. Yeah. Alan, did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you uh, looked into that because it, it, it has been mentioned occasionally in regards to Russell. Okay. If the town ever decides in its wisdom to do something to keep that building standing and, uh, and decides that it wants to use CPA money for it, it would mean, it would mean millions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that would be to bond using the bond, the CPA money. So, I mean, we're way, we're nowhere near deciding that. I don't think, I, I hope they, they consider it, but it's good to know that it's an option uh, to make it more uh, feasible. And it's the same thing, it, you know, if the CPA committee approved it, it would be before town meeting, right. and town right. meeting would have to approve it. And, but it does commit the town every single year for that 20 year yep. period, X amount will go to- Just, um, just, like, just like our other buildings. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the, the difference though, is that if you bond with CPA money, it's a majority vote at town meeting. Right, it is And a if you bond vote. without CPA, it's a two thirds vote. Okay. So, it's, uh, yeah. so it's a lot easier. And, yeah. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not sure if there has to be a town wide vote. It no, probably it, does. I, it does not need to have like a ballot vote after town no, meeting. No, oh, so it's a lot easier. Yep, I don't think it affects the taxes at all. Right. It, it's not, a, it's not, it's not a, uh, two and a half um, override. override. It's, right. In fact, it has no effect on taxes. It's just that it just ties up your CPA money. Some half of it. Of, half of it. Or the, some the, of the, town, it. the town portion. Right. The town portion. Right. And it leaves the state portion for other uh, projects. Yeah. Right. And once, well, Edwin will remember this. We had uh, David Nixon brought in an accountant to one of our meetings who laid out the procedure and how much money we could get, depending on how much money we put forward at the beginning. Yep. Um, okay. And it wasn't as much money as I thought. Right. No. <laughs> you know, you thought you'd lay out a little money up front and get a ton of money, and but it wasn't as much as I thought. So. No. Um, and the committee was definitely against it. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. But that was a long time ago. New members, new opinions. Right. You know, when the time comes, we can have the discussion again. Just yeah. because the old CPA committee didn't want to do it doesn't mean that we can't do it. Right. Yeah. I think it depends on the project, too. Of course. Well, it, yeah, it would have to be something really that really would benefit the town. And it was the only way it could happen, Yeah, I would think. Yeah. When the tornado destroys town hall, we want to rebuild it. <laughs> mm. okay. no, maybe when the steeple from the first church falls on town hall right. we'll have to build That's both buildings back <laughs> let's hope it hits Lord Voldemort <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, all right I'm going to share the screen again and um, so this is sorry I lost my view here it is. Um, let me make it bigger. This is the just draft wording for things, and it needs to be tweaked based on our votes for tonight. Um, it seems like, you know, I look back, it seems like every town meeting, the lawyer changes the wording somehow. So, mm -hmm. you know, just because I used what was used last year. It doesn't mean that it's what they want, and but it's a start. So um, I put the fifty thousand. I did. I just put in some figures, and I put the five thousand. So um, so that's pretty much there. The extensions will take off the Russell School roof. We'll add on the um, 
the water testing. I'm just going to do this so that I don't um, have to think about it too hard after. Um, I'll fill in those dates and the account numbers. So Goodwin Memorial Repairs for that account number is two years, study is one year, and then the water testing, it'll be one year. Um, and then the cleanup to return funds is the Plainville Cemetery and the old Hadley Cemetery. And we're not going to do the library brackets until we know what that figure is. Um, so we just have the three, the Plainville, the old Hadley, and the restore the 1740 maps will be coming back. And they all go to historic. Um, and then the first church steeple is um, out of the historic fund and it's to the first congregational church and it's to authorize the select board to enter into a grant agreement, setting forth the terms of said grant, including a provision requiring said funds to be extended within two years. And then it gets returned. Um, and Zaturka will make this the 24-1. Mary, can we yeah. go back to the to the church? I can. Do we want to do we want to say that the grant agreement has to say if they sell the church they return the money, oh, or yeah. is it? Or Good is idea, it, Andy. Good idea, Andy. You know, or is that just part of the agreement? Um, no, we can spell that out. And people think I mean, it's it important. Says, I think it's. Well, it, it says it in the in the in the motion. It says it in the motion, and this is this is an agreement between the select board and the first congregational church. So, in a way, it's hard to we will you know we'll send this over a grant agreement with that in there. But I think it's really the select board that. Right. Okay. Fine. I I just I I'm, I'm not quite sure how much we can say what we want them to do. Okay. Um, fine. But the two years is is you know pretty has become pretty routine for the CPA. So I think yes. that's. But thank you. Um, and then Zaturka Park is the twenty four thousand one hundred, and that'll be from the open space fund, and spelled out playground equipment, benches, and a covered picnic table area, um, and under the direction of the town administrator. That's good um, to me in two years. So does that look fine to everyone? Sure. Yep. Great. We'll get that over to them and that will be that. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. All right. So we're almost done. Um, so one of the things just real quick, because it's nice to be within the two hours. Um, just, you know, we do have Two and a half million in the general fund. And, you know, we want to encourage people that have good projects that fall within the CPA guidelines um, to do it. So there is, I do have an email from, um, let me get it, Ann, Ann McKenzie, the school superintendent. Um, and they have, the town paid by over half a million for the fields to be done at um, the high school. And they are working with a design firm to um, put more stuff in there. Um, and I'm not even sure all the specs that they are, but they have, that was, they have another phase to go at the fields at Hopkins. Um, and what they're hoping to do is they should be getting the design um, in April the design work from Berkshire Design, and then they want to do an application to us in the fall mm -hmm. um, to request funds for the special town meeting in the fall. And then um, if the town meeting approves it, they want to go out to specs late fall or early winter, award the bid you know, a year from now and have the phase two start in the next summer of 23. So mm -hmm. that, you know, that sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Conservation Commission might be working on um, some APRs, Edwin. Um, uh, as of as of now, no. But you're right. There are some that are somewhere in the works. I don't know their uh, where they are. Okay. But um, usually, we don't. Uh, the Conservation Commission gets notified when it's 
time to ask for money. So all right. So you're you're not actively no, it's thing. usually between the applicant and the state, and then the state will contact us and saying, listen, you need you need to contribute so much money. Okay. And I think, yeah, there was an email going around one for one one APR with saying would the town be supporting it. So I'm sure that'll hopefully by September that'll be in works. And yep. so there may be some other out there, but um we'll, yeah. yeah. I don't know if anyone else had any any thoughts or um, heard of anything. You mean about how to get more people to apply, or about anybody thinking about applying, or that we um, any other projects in the works? Those were the only two I knew of. Was one APR and, and the, the historical the historical commission is working on a project right now for. Uh, some signs and a driving tour. So you'll hear from us soon. Awesome. Very good. All right, last thing. Um, how does it sound for our next meeting to be September 12th and 26th? Sounds good. That'll people give people till September 1st to do the applications. And it's a much... It's a much shorter period between then and the end of the special town meeting in the fall, but they are dealing with as much budget stuff. And I just can't see trying to meet in the summer because I think we'd have a hard time getting a quorum and be hard for people to get the applications in. So right. um, if people like that schedule, then. Um, so those are Mondays? They're, yep, they're both Mondays and it's not Labor Day. So it's yeah. <laughs> Monday after Labor Day and then two weeks after that. Good. Anything yep. else? Now you mentioned something that um, we might not be on Zoom, or we don't want to say anything. Oh, Jennifer said that uh, the I guess it's the state says that meetings can be until April can be on Zoom, and then they're going to have to go back to in person. But we'll see what you know. That we'll doesn't see what mean happens, that won't yeah. be extension extended. Let's hope. But Let's hope. So it, it may not be the like, end of the line. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like. Um, Two possibilities to meet in are the um, there's a library room and the senior center room, and both have screens, so we can still put oh, stuff up on the great. instead of me, you know, putting it on the computer, it can go up on the screen. And so yeah. either one of those sounds great. So we'll, um, you know, that'll be for town hall to tell us. I think where you know, hopefully we'll have a regular meeting place, but um, <laughs> it'll, it, you know, I think Zoom has had some advantages. <laughs> Yep. Uh, before, on snowy nights. <laughs> before, before we go, because I'm approaching my Zoom limit, um, ideas for future projects. I emailed Denise about possibly hiring someone to do a, uh, a study of potential historic places and buildings in Hadley that could get historic re um, designation mm -hmm. um, and just going through the town and you know, just making recommendations and asking the owners if they would be interested um, as to sort of start the process of putting things on the appropriate historic registers. So uh, uh, that may be one proposal that, that we're going to work on. And then the other one that came to me was uh, restoration of the Goff Bible at the Historical Society. Hmm um because it's very old and it's kind of falling apart neat uh but and that's pronounced because siri always calls it goffy turn goffy. on goffy street maybe, maybe i don't actually i don't know how to pronounce it no i don't trust siri i've, I've always heard goff <laughs> yeah um but uh i don't know the society has been reluctant to approach our committee They've never come before us for anything. Um, several of the old members were against the CPA. They saw it as a tax increase. Um, but does anyone have any contacts with that group about how we could approach them and, you know, do for the Bible what we did for the maps? 
And I'm sorry, Alan Weinberg got off because he's very involved with the Historical Society. Um, oh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll approach him then. I think he'd be a good one. And actually, Andy, I really like your idea you gave Greg and, and Diane, if you can, you know, maybe follow up on this too of a study of what recreational opportunities there are in town. I think that's a, an awesome idea, you know, to have more than what we have or maybe make some more easy, easily accessible for people. Um, maybe they'll get on that once the Turk Park passes. We'll have to see. But I'm happy to work with anybody. You know, uh, working with the applicants on their applications is my favorite part of this committee. Um, and so if you know somebody who wants to apply and you don't want to personally help them, <laughs> you can always have them call me. That's great, Andy, because you have a wealth of knowledge. And I mean, what you asked Greg to produce was exactly what Stuart said we should be asking him. And, and I didn't ask him those questions. So I, I really appreciate, you know, your, your knowledge and, and working with that. Yeah, the work we do here is so important, you know, um, and the committee is working great and the projects are getting done. You know, uh, one, one other thing I keep saying, one other thing. Um, we are more than just an advisory committee, although that's how we've been working in the past. The original CPA law, the proposals were supposed to come from the committee. We were supposed to generate the proposals and we accepted the sort of grant model because it was easier. Um, but if you, as a committee member, see something that you think make a good project, you can make it happen. There's no conflict of interest problems or any of that kind of thing. So we can be more proactive, you know, if that's what we choose. Interesting. You know, another way we're not just an advisory is if we vote no, over, if the majority votes no on an application, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so, right. And, you know. Right. And we can change the, we can change the applications and the proposals any way we want. Right. We can money. increase them, decrease them, give the money to one person, give the money to another person. We have tr tremendous uh, latitude mm -hmm. in terms of how we present the proposals to town meeting. Right. Well, it's, it's, there's only two this time, but they're both very worthwhile and um, mm -hmm. other good ones still in the works. So um, I'm sure there'll be some for the fall as well. All right, everyone, thank you very much. And um, hope you all have a good nine, eight months to our next yep. meeting. And I move we adjourn. Uh, a second. Right. And I would just add, thank you, Mary, for your great leadership. You've That's been off. Very thank good. You. Very good, Mary. Wow, yes. it's a great group. <laughs> it is. All right. Well, I, uh, do we need all to in favor? That? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.